Make sure you check out our new sponsor, the Health Blaze. All the information is in the description. Use the promo code above. Good filler one boxing at 18% off of all their natural products from deodorant, pomade, toothpaste, and much, much more. And they have additional discounts on their website as well. That's the healthblaze.com. Start December 20th. That promo code is good for 18% off. We go. All right, we back. Good fellow sports TV. I appreciate everybody that's checking in. Make sure you hit the subscribe button, hit the bell icon button. We'll miss another video. Bear with me on this list. Top 10 ducks of 2018 going into 2019. Definitely appreciate everybody checking in, shooting this video live from the crib, man. Make sure you check out our new sponsor, The Health Blaze. You can find them at thehealthblaze.com. Uh, promo code goodfellow one boxing Get 18% off immediately. And that's in addition to any other promo codes. Or promos or discounts they're running over there the website uh and the promo code is in the description go check them out they got all natural products foot soaks natural toothpaste soaps lotions bath bombs and much much more but number 10 on our list um is jerry Hurd versus jamil charlo i think it's uh you know 10th biggest duck of the year i could be missing a few let me know if i'm missing a few or some honorable mentions in the comment section but I won't say this is like a massive duck, but all I'm saying was he was uh, excited to fight um, um, Kale Brook. And then when he found Kale Brook, didn't, uh, you know, didn't want to fight him. He got he got a shoulder injury a couple months after fighting Lara. We didn't hear nothing about any injuries during the Lara fight. So right there, it seemed pretty fishy. And people are going to dis dismiss this one because uh, Jamil Charlo uh, lost to Tony Harrison. But Jir Heard wasn't trying to catch that fade. And I felt that he lost. Um, you know, he lost out because he could have took Charlo's O. Even if he do beat Charlo now, you know, it's just, it's like, it is what it is, okay? <laughs> you know, it's like, okay, you beat him, Tony Harrison did it first. Now, you know, if Charlo beat him, it looked even bad, you know, but most people think Charlo got robbed, so, versus Tony Harrison, so, uh, I thought it was a competitive fight. You know, I have to go back and watch it, could have went either which way. But, you know, maybe people won't just try to, you know, take it away from him or, or whatever it may be, or the situation may be. But, you know, it's just, you know, it was a duck, in my opinion. He should have went home and fought him. I believe he actually did have a shoulder injury. But before that shoulder injury was revealed, he's talking about he needed to fight one right-hander. So, it is what it is. That's our number 10 duck uh, last year. Going into this year, number 9, uh, Errol Spence, Duck and Terrence Crawford, okay? Um, you know, you thought I wasn't going to put this one on the list? Yeah, okay? It wasn't a major, major key in DJ Khaled voice of a duck. But it was a duck. He went a after the Danny Garcia um, Sean Porter fighting a press conference. He went out there and basically issued a challenge to Bob Arum and Top Rank, and they and they and they uh, called the bluff. You know what I'm saying? They did what they were supposed to do. A veteran promoter like Bob Arum. That's why Terrence Crawford hired him. He said, "Let's make the fight. I need to, you know, let's make the fight. Let's make the fight." And you know, Terrence Crawford had multiple people, including Derek James and a few Al Heyman boxing employees, said. They ain't looking to make that fight next, uh, uh, next. you know what I'm saying? They're looking to go a different route. He uh, was in negotiation with Sean Porter, but that didn't go well. We talk about that a little bit later on the list. On the list, um, You know, that didn't go well. And um, all of a sudden, he settled for Mikey Garcia, so it was based on opportunity for him to fight Terrence Crawford. But obviously, I didn't think both sides were in a rush to make that fight happen um, right now anyway. But, you know, Errol Spence sent out there and put his foot in his mouth and issued the challenge. And at the same time, you know, Bob Arum called his bluff. He didn't. He didn't. He said he didn't want to fight. He came on on a trill boxing talk. You know. You know the media fight they did the same day as Walter K and Andrade. He said he not looking to fight Terrence Crawford next. You know. He said the same thing that Floyd came out said earlier that day. But they ain't looking to make that fight. And like I said, I heard that. You know, Derek James said he don't feel like Terrence Crawford. Errol Spence is ready. Okay, I can come out and say it now. You know, Derek James didn't feel like he ready. And I heard that from multiple sources who don't know each other. And it's no secret. A lot of people in boxing believe Terrence Crawford is going to whoop Errol Spence ass. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, a duck is a duck. You got to call a spade a spade. It's going to make some people upset. But guess what? That's just what it was, man. It's what it was. You know, that dude was getting called out by Bob Graham. Now, was Bob Graham really looking to make that fight? Probably not. You guys are probably going to be right in the comment section. But guess what? He came on and said he didn't want it. His coach came on and said he didn't want it. Some Al Heyman employees came on and said they're not looking to make that fight. So what you call it? Duck, duck? Yeah, shoot. <laughs> Goose. <laughs> you know? Um, that was nine. This is eight. Regis, uh, Jose Ramirez ducking Regis Progress. It's kind of winning under the radar. A lot of people didn't hear about this one. You know, uh, pretty much. Uh, you know, Regis Progress in the Mirror Mile supposed to be a title eliminator. So it was Regis and Victor Postal that turned into uh, Julius and Dango because Volt Postal pulled out 
And, um, you know, Jose Ramirez said no. You know, uh, you know, Bob Miriam and Don King set it up where Miramon and Jose Ramirez, uh, winner, became the champion. It was supposed to be two title eliminators, like an unofficial tournament. Regis Progress got the shit in the stick. In return, in return for them not doing the Regis Progress and Jose Ramirez fight, Regis Progress got a fight date on ESPN. His first headliner, they exchanged that with Lou DiBella. They said they wanted to do the fight after World Series of Boxing or somewhere down the line with Jose because they didn't feel like Jose Ramirez was ready yet. And, that, and that's the facts. That's the facts. And Jose Ramirez wasn't going to fight Josh Taylor neither. Josh Taylor was going to be his next mandatory. Josh Taylor uh, felt so he felt so confident that they weren't going to make that fight with him that he was the secondary title uh, mandatory. And he was the silver champion, and he just entered the tournament. Jose Ramirez also ducked the World Series of Boxing Tournament because he didn't feel like he could win. Okay? He didn't get in that tournament because he didn't feel like he could win. He won the biggest ducks of the year, man, but this is the one that went under the wraps. He didn't want no parts of Regis Progress. Tom Brain gave Regis Progress a fight date. You know how precious a fight date is in New Orleans? They gave him that fight date to hush him up and not to let him fight Jose Ramirez because they didn't feel like Jose Ramirez was ready. Now, Ramirez tried to pop off like he would have jumped in the tournament. He'll fight anybody. He know he a coward. He know he a punk. He a chump. We all know that, man. This is one of the, you know, the ducks that just, you know, it go under, it go under the radar, man. It does. It go way under the radar, man. And, you know, it is what it is, man. These dudes going to just act like, you know, the shit ain't happened and act like it ain't go the way it should have went. But at the same time, it is what it is, man. Can't get mad at the situation, you know. But, hey, shake my head at the situation. Um, that was, uh, you go our next one, man. Manny Pacquiao and, um, and uh, Vasalo Machenko, one of the silent ducks of the year. Um, I think this is six. Excuse me, my, my, my count is wrong, but I think this is six. Uh, Manny Pacquiao, Lomachenko, um, you know, you know, Lomachenko came out towards the end of the year. I think it was before his, uh, his clash with homeboy, uh, uh, what's homeboy name? Uh, uh the dude that, uh, Jose Pedraza, the dude that tank beat. And said that he didn't want to fight Pacquiao. He had nothing to gain, you know, and he went out here ducking and, and saying that he ain't had nothing to gain fighting the old dude. But at the end of the day, he was one of the biggest ducks in boxing that went under the table just like Jose Ramirez because ESPN got the protection for the selection with the media. Lomachenko did want to fight Pacquiao because he was scared he was going to lose. Pacquiao was willing to come all the way down and fight him. Oh, I didn't have nothing to gain from fighting Manny Pacquiao. Yes, you do. Same thing Adrian Broner looking to gain. Same thing Earl Spence looking to gain. Notoriety, fortune, fame. He knew he was gonna get his ass whooped by Manny Pacquiao, and thus for thus because uh, thus you know that happened. Pacquiao moved on to Premier Boxing Champions. Lomachenko was scared of that fade, man. He didn't want to catch that fade. He knew he was gonna get his ass whooped, you know. And that's unfortunate. He supposed to be this big competitor with anybody, boogie man. But like I said, for Errol Spence, man, you can't be the boogie man when you turn it down fights. And Manny Pacquiao was willing to come all the way down to 35. And he knew Manny Pacquiao could probably be comfortable at 35 and hit harder and still be pretty much fast and give him all the trouble in the world. And that would have hurt his stock. You know what I'm saying? Bob Aaron probably believed that he could beat Manny Pacquiao, but Lomachenko wouldn't believe it. So, therefore, if my count is right, and excuse me if it's not, um, he's the sixth biggest duck. This is the sixth biggest duck of the year, in my opinion. You know, and I know some people are going to talk about Big Baby Miller and stuff of that nature, but I don't even, you know, take him serious. You know what I'm saying? I don't even, even you know, I don't even take him serious as a, as a real boxer. So, it is what it is, man. He's a joke. He, he's a gimmick. You know, he's a big gimmick. But we're going to slide into number five. Top five should be Heat. You know, this one could be high, but it's a lot of good ducks in there. And that's Leo Santa Cruz ducking Gary Russell. He's been ducking Gary Russell for quite some time. You know, he was willing to fight Carl Frampton because Frampton got put on the, on the flow about three times versus uh his American debut versus the Mexican cat who passed away, who got killed, excuse me. So, Leo Santa Cruz been ducking Gary Russell. This easily could have been number one, but the four in front of it, you know what I'm saying? It's, it it just, just shows you how, you know, what state of boxing, the state of boxing is in and how bad it is. It's duck, 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 duck goose for real. You know, you know, he duck goose, he Donald duck, he dark wing duck. He the duck. He everything, man. Daffy Duck. You know, Leo Santa Cruz is probably one of the biggest prominent ducks of our lifetime. You know what I'm saying? The sport of boxing. And apparently he went out there saying that he wanted to fight Gary Russell and avenge his loss in the amateurs after, you know, Gary Russell looked a little bit vulnerable versus Jojo Diaz. And most people thought of Jojo Diaz 
would be able to make the way, he would have gave Gary Russell some problems, and I could have agreed with that. Gary Russell, Jojo Diaz is a good fighter, you know, Olympic pedigree, uh, but Santa Cruz don't want want that work. He know he gonna fold Santa Cruz up. Gary Russell gonna fold Santa Cruz up like a deceptive kind, bro. You know what I'm saying? He gonna be like a fold away bunk bed, you know, or bed or whatever, you know, couch sofa. And you know it is what it is. You know people just overlook it because Leo Santa Cruz stay out the way. He don't be over here like Big Baby Miller popping off of his mouth like he want these fights and then not want them. Santa Cruz real humble. He played a role well, so don't nobody approach him. A lot of black fight black fight fans that get on Javante Tank Davis, they get on Big Baby Miller, they get on these other fighters and stuff of that nature. You feel me? But they don't get on Santa Cruz because he fought, he he under the radar. He do an idiot uh, interview. Every now and again, but you know what? He played a role for that protection. And Al Hammond gonna always make sure he protected. And a lot of media forget how much of a punk bitch he really is. You know what I'm saying? I don't forget. You know what I'm saying? I'm tired of the brothers pulling up on Javante Tank Davis. And I told him, I said, if you guys gonna continue to talk about Javante Tank Davis, how about we talk about Leo Santa Cruz before we talk about a 23, 24 year old dude? And Santa Cruz been robbing us on pay per views for years on Floyd and Canelo pay per views versus construction workers. But number four, I told you it's going to get good. Triple G and Jamal Charlo. I'm not sure if they officially ordered this fight again, but I ain't heard nothing from Triple G, okay? I heard that he possibly could be fighting Canelo again or going to the zone or he could go over to ESPN. But at the end of the day, guess what? We ain't heard nothing from the WBC ordering it. We ain't heard nothing from Tom Loeffler. We ain't heard nothing from Gennady Golovkin. People say that uh, Jamal Charlo was looking vulnerable versus uh, – uh, Core Bob and Core Bob been in there with Triple G and the amateurs. He been there with Kovalev. He beat Usyk. Uh, he lost to Gennady Golovkin. He wanted to advance that in the professional ranks, but you don't hear Gennady Golovkin opening his trap. He don't want the smoke, do we? Don't want none of the smoke. You know, some of the smoke, the white smoke, the black smoke, the uh, the the turkey smoker out back, whatever. He don't want none of it, man. You anybody that's vulnerable, you know, I want to see you call them out. Then you know what I'm saying? You might as well. You know what I'm saying? He looks sweet. You supposed to go ahead and pick that sweet uh cherry, pick that sweet watermelon, and get him up out of here. You know what I'm saying? But he ain't said nothing. Okay, still to this day, he ain't said nothing. He ain't tried to bark up that Charlo tweet. He ain't sent no tweet out saying, "Oh, that's all he got." He gonna act like he ain't see the fight. He ain't like he don't know the fight. All all of a sudden, I mean, all of a sudden you gonna know he gonna be turning up fighting Canelo Alvarez, skipping on the WBC, and WBC gonna fuck around, sanction it again. You gonna let him fight Danny Jacobs and Charlo and Golovkin and Canelo gonna escape again. So at the same time, we already know the game, man. They got the protection for the selection. Like I said before, I think it was one of the stupidest things for this dude to hold the intern WBC middleweight title and Charlo and Jamal and Charlo to be exact and get and drop out the other ranking ranking systems because he would have been in line to get that shot before Danny Jacobs versus Trevor Janko and they on the same network. And he would have been in line to get that shot over uh uh, Demetrius Andrade versus Billy Joe Saunders, or however that would have went. But, hey, that ain't none of my business. He made that business decision. I understand that the WBC is seen as gold. It's seen as the greatest thing of all time. But, hey, it is what it is, man. But that's number four. We coming into number three. We coming into the good stuff. And here go your boy. Should have put K. Diddy in the picture, too. Um, here come your boy, Sean Porter. You know, he dug Errol Spence. Yeah, this number four. I believe we said number three, excuse me. He ducked Sean. He ducked uh, Errol Spence after, you know, verbally saying, oh, Errol Spence, you know, it'd be the easiest fight to make. It's the fight that we all want to see. I'm telling y'all it's going to be the easiest fight to make. They enter negotiations low key. And all of a sudden, K. Diddy didn't sign off on it. K. D. got K. Diddy got the power of attorney over Sean Porter, okay? You know, basically, he can do, he pray like what Eddie Hearn is to AJ. And... Basically, you know, Sean Porter couldn't couldn't uh, couldn't override his daddy because his daddy got him in a con lifetime contract, so he couldn't fight Earl Spence until his daddy say so. So, at the end of the day, he's still out here making Earl uh, making Sean look bad. But hey, when he put that pen in his paper and you had to sign a contract with your daddy, and you and your daddy just couldn't be on a handshake agreement on the family and blood bond. Hey, it is what it is, man. So you that blood fall on you. You shouldn't be out there capping. Telling everybody that this is going to be the easiest fight to make. When we all know it wasn't going to be the easiest fight to make. Because your daddy is in the way. And obviously, I don't believe you want the fight either. You know, that fight going to have to be where Earl Spence build up the pay-per-view. And, and Sean going to have to just, he's going to be to be so much money that K. Diddy going to have to retire. Because, you know, he don't have no occupation. 
He don't train no other prominent fighters, so he ain't getting no other money. He probably got some real estate around him and Sean, but, you know, their real uh, income is coming in from boxing. And when he said, I can make my son uh, retire, when I say so, everybody should have caught on that, you know, he got a son in a slave deal contract. And that's sad that a black man don't trust his son enough to uh, to do the right thing and you ain't raised him right enough. But remember, his other son whooped his ass in the gym, okay? His other son put them hands on him, you know, and beat him up. So, you know, maybe he thinks Sean Porter, you know, might get brave one day and figure out that he the boss. It's like the Space Jam. Remember the, the little dudes figure out they bigger than homeboy and they got rid of him. But, uh, you know, oh, this is number three, excuse me. That was number four. I'm off. This is number three, okay? Dillian White, Luis Ortiz, okay? Um, yeah, man, you know, Dillian White out here lying, saying they offered Ortiz a fight, and low-key, they ain't never offered him a fight. He could have fought him in December, and then, like, Derek Chisora, uh wanted to get it in. They paid, I heard Derek Chisora $5 million to fight Dillian White in a rematch, which Dillian White won the original fight. Why they had a problem after Derek, Ch Derek Chisora hired uh, David Hay to be his manager, and they was asking for a bunch of money. You know, Dillian White was going quiet when Luis Ortiz said, you know what, uh, I drop off the uh, water under car and I come over to the UK and fight you. Send me an offer. Man, Dillian White was sending offers to Derek Chisor. They overpaid Derek Chisor. Derek Chisor is a guy that just lost to some dude in Monte Carlo. You feel me? And, and they overpaying this guy to fight in the UK $5 million. They could have gave Ortiz a million or a million five. And Dillian White could have kept the rest. But Dillian White was scared of Luis Ortiz. He never wanted that fight. Back when, you know, Eddie Hearn lied to Dan Rayfield and told Dan Rayfield that they was uh they was ready to make that fight, you know what I'm saying with uh with uh Dilly, with Dillian White Ortiz, and then th the next day he told Rayfield they would sign a fight. The next day they turned around and not announced it was Joseph Parker. So they been ducking Dillian White, and Dillian White said, "Y'all sent him an offer." At the end of the day, this is one of the biggest ducks in boxing because both of them big ass heavyweights, and Dillian White was out here capping it. Then he went MIAO. You know, when, you know, uh, Derek Chisora, you know, didn't want the fight. You know, they overpaid Derek Chisora. Derek Chisora ain't worth $5 million for shit, if that's true. Derek Chisora wasn't worth 500000 for that fight. But they went out that way and made sure he got his money because they were scared to fight Ortiz. We already know. But people turned around and said, oh, wow, they're Doug Dillian White. Come on, you ever see a Dillian White fight? Even a blind man or a dude that dude that don't know nothing about boxing, watch him fight for a couple minutes, and we know who's going to get the ass with him. It's going to be Dillian White. Okay, number two. Like I said, I apologize for my count off. Um, number two, um, Errol Spence, uh, Keith Thurman. Keith Thurman basically retired um, to stay away from Errol Spence, especially last year. In 2017, basically, he took two, uh, damn near almost two years off to stay away from Errol Spence. He was out there boxing the streets in Naples last year. We all remember that. To my, his shoulder was hurt. What shit wrong with him? He went on the Brandon Schaub show and said that uh, his podcast show and said, "Oh my shoulder," but it was but it was really his elbow and his hand. He don't even know what injury he is. So uh, he out here lying, man. So he basically even back what 2015 or whatever it was, the 16 when Earl was 15 and 0, you know, and Floyd said you fight Earl and you get a shot at me. He didn't want to fight Earl. Then. Ever since Earl came up and was a, was a contender or even still a prospect. Keith Thurman just feels some type of way. His face turned into a Heinz ketchup bottle. You know, he'll get angry or the term or pale because he was scared of Errol Spence because he sent a ghost coming. He been ducking Errol Spence. This dude left the sport of boxing to avoid Errol Spence. That's the only reason. If Errol Spence wasn't there, man, this dude would have been cleaned up Sean Porter again, cleaned up Danny Garcia. He'd been in caught the fade or shot the fade with Terrence Crawford, getting ready to shoot the fade with Terrence Crawford right now. It wouldn't be no problem. But as soon as he, this dude came up on the scene, Keith Thurman fell back behind the scenes. And that's real talk, man. That that's real talk. It, it, the only bigger duck than this is obviously people gonna get it, but and we gonna get to that in a minute. But it ain't no bigger duck than this one, bro. No, I mean it's only one more bigger duck last year going to this one than this one, uh, going in this year from this one. And uh, Keith Thurman retired. You know what I'm saying? He retired to avoid Errol Spence. You know what I'm saying? And they better not let that dude get that Manny Pacquiao fight. Cause if Keith Thurman get that Manny Pacquiao fight, win, lose, or draw, he done, bro. He done. He going to retire. He going to pack his luggage, and he going to go back playing his little flute and his clear net. He going to go back to a squibber lifestyle and stuff of that nature. That's just how he cut. Okay? he He's a coward, and we all know that Keith Thurman is a coward. And, you know, anytime you retire from your profession to, to avoid somebody, man, 
That's a, that's that's he probably was bullied in school too. That's probably why he started boxing. But number one is obviously AJ turning down fifty million dollars. I mean, it don't get no worse than that. You know, somebody turned down fifty million and then acknowledge they acknowledged the fifty million. Barry Hearn acknowledged it while they was fishing. He acknowledged it while after the Fury Wilder fight saying, Oh, I'm glad we didn't take the fifty million and get robbed. Like a draw is really a robbery. I guess I guess in their opinion it is. So they didn't take the fifty million. They told him not to take the fifty million. Then he came over to America when Blue Blood pressed him and asked him about the fifty million. Oh, I was just referencing. I really didn't want fifty. It def- I want a hundred million dollars now. So, whole oh, coward man going around here, wrapping his arms, playing with other dudes, nipples. You know, hugging up with his male friends. They never got no women around, bro. I mean, I see him pictures with men more than women at the club. You know what I'm saying? So that's just what it is, man. Biggest duck in bo- boxing history. Um, guaranteed 50 million could have made almost 100 million or at least 80 million. Then a rematch, they would have did numbers. And people still going against the grain. You got still coons out here saying that Deontay Wilder is ducking. And we all see Deontay Wilder fought killers back to back last year. Ortiz and Fury. Anthony Joshua fought punk ass Joseph Parker, who everybody thought lost every fight that we see him fight in. And then he lost to, uh, and then he was losing to Bevekin in some people's opinion. You know? So at the end of the day, what type of year he had last year? He's scared. You know, he got shook up by Big Baby Miller, chump ass. Nobody's scared of Big Baby Miller. He should have slapped him dead in his mouth. So, ducking the 50 million. It's the biggest duck of last year, in my opinion. But y'all know what it is, man. Top 10 most duck, ducks going into last year, going into this year. Don't forget, we on Facebook, Instagram. I'm on Facebook and Twitter. Also got a Facebook group. You can reach out to me in the email. If you got a business question, sponsorship inquiry, or video request, uh, make sure you subscribe button, hit the bell icon button. You want to make a donation to the channel, that link's in the description as well. Don't forget our sponsor, The Hell Blaze at TheHellBlaze.com. Uh, promo code GoodfellowOneBoxing. You get 18% off. Uh, in addition to promos and other discounts that they run it on the uh, on the website, all natural products, foot soaks.